I have here a brand new MVC application written in .NET 5 and straight out of the box if you go to the home controller you can see there's lots of action results which are using the I action result interface and we've got views and these are just standard CSHTML views right let's go to the privacy view because we know that on the default template that's something you can click on let's say on the privacy view you wanted to have a button that would make changes to your website without having to go and load another entire page well, back in the old days, we'd call that AJAX requests, asynchronous, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Well, guess what? These policies still apply to multi-page applications. The single page applications that are taking the development world by storm right now, for example, React, deal a lot more with state management and finding other ways to modify what's on the screen. But AJAX is still built into and available in your MVC applications. Take a look at this MVC application. Let's go over to shared and let's go to layout. You'll notice in here that jQuery is still included by default. Go to your home controller and scroll down just underneath privacy. We're gonna add a new controller method here and we're actually gonna make it a JSON result. JavaScript object notation, right? And let's just call it my JSON. And here we can create an object and send it back to JavaScript where it can update the page without loading the full page. So just real quickly, in order to send something back that's a realistic object, I think we need to make a model. So I'm gonna add a class here, won't take very long. Let's just call it silly data. And we'll put a couple of properties in there. So prop, tab, tab, let's call it ABC and make it an integer. Prop, tab, tab, string, tab, DEF. Okay. And let's go ahead and instantiate that here. So silly data, my silly data equal to new silly data. Uh, and we'll do control space get the first one and we'll make that equal to 99 oops add a comma there control space you get the second one and we'll set that equal to my testing string don't forget your semicolon now you could do return json of my silly data let's open the privacy view and on this page, let's add a script tag. Inside that script tag, we're going to need a document.ready function. Now, document.ready is JavaScript that will execute once the page is loaded. So we don't want necessarily to call our Ajax routine right when the page is loaded. Otherwise, we wouldn't need an Ajax call. But we could bind some things in here and make it work that way. So let's say you had, for instance, a button. And let's say that button had a, the text in there. It said, just click me. And let's give it an ID. Let's call it button one. Now your jQuery selector, we could select by ID. We could select by class. We could select by position in the DOM or the document object model. Um, in this video, I can't cover all the possible jQuery selectors, but if that's something you're interested in, just let me know and I'll make you a video just on jQuery selectors. Because once you know the selectors for jQuery, the rest of it is just hitting the documentation, right? But neither here nor there, let's bind that. So let's do on. So if we do Go ahead and select with the pound sign because that means I'm selecting by ID button one. We've got the button element and we're going to say on when that button is clicked, then we will execute a function 
Make sure I close those there. And the function will be everything that's between this and this. Everything that's in this code block is what will be executed. And here is where we're going to call the MVC, get the data out, and then we can update the screen with the data that's returned. Now, there are a couple of choices when we make an AJAX call. Because the jQuery library has made it easy for us, we can use the built-in get and post methods that they have to simplify things, or we can use the AJAX method. The difference is there's just additional parameters available. I encourage you to go to the jQuery documentation website after you watch this video to see what the other ones are. I'm going to use the get. So let's go ahead and do that. jQuery get. Now, if you're not familiar, the dollar sign and the word jQuery are interchangeable. It's just a shorthand reference to get at the library, the JavaScript library, of course. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the URL, which should be the home controller, the method name, which we called it my JSON. And then the parameters, which we have none. Actually, the parameters would be more like, you know, in a get like this. But we don't have any parameters, so we don't need to add any query string there. And then the second parameter is going to be the function itself that we call when we get back from the server. Sim looking, starting to look similar, right? So right in here is where we're going to do something with the data. And the data is going to be in whatever we put inside these parentheses. I'll just call it data. That's how most examples do it. So now let's say we get back this object here. We've got to think what we're going to do with it. Why don't we just take the string portion, which is in DEF, and we'll update the screen with that. Let's go ahead and change the button. Let's add some text after the button here. Call it empty div. So what we could do is we could do empty div. Oops. Empty div. And then I could do the jQuery HTML, which just says either get the contents of the HTML or populate the contents of the HTML. And I could populate that data with data.def. I could choose the other items from that object there, of course, as well. And keep in mind, the semicolons are optional because this is JavaScript. So I could actually take these off and it won't make a difference, but it will be less characters to load over the network for your end users. All right, why don't we go ahead and put a breakpoint in here. Before we run it, go to your layout.cshtml. This is obviously the layout of how your page is put together. You've got your title, at the start the CSS is loaded, then the HTML, then the JavaScript. So if you want to have these JavaScript files loaded first, before, which includes the library jQuery that is prerequisite to running our JavaScript code, then all you have to do is make sure that your code gets inside of the scripts, the, the section of section scripts, render section scripts. So all we have to do is back inside our file that we were just in. If I go back to privacy, we have to wrap this script tag in section scripts, at sign section scripts. One last thing I did have to do to get mine working is our property name here, DEF, I had originally uppercase D, made it lowercase D. If you have the same kind of routing setup in your MVC application and it doesn't work, when you follow along with this example, you might have to drop it to lowercase D. All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and hit that controller now. 
So make sure your breakpoint is still set and hit F5 to run it. Click on Privacy. There's your Click Me button. Click it. Boom, got to our controller. That's a good sign. I can tab through it, return my silly data. As you can see, it shows your test string in 99. I'll hit F5. And there it is. My testing string is showing up on the screen. Now I did mention you could use Ajax for that instead of get. There's also post, but there's one I hadn't mentioned, which is another shorthand just like get, and that one is load. So we could use that one. I'll show you how that works really quickly over here in the privacy. So instead of having to do HTML, the jQuery HTML function to put the data inside here, we could do load. So what load would look like is dollar dot. And here you could select this right away. So no dot dollar. Get your empty div selector and just do dot load. And you just put in the URL there. Since it's just a get, even if your get has query string parameters, you just put that inside there. And there's always ways to escape these query strings. You know, you can get as complicated as you want with this stuff. But look how much we could do with just one line here. So if I go ahead and run that, it should load the entire contents. Now we're returning an object. So over here, that might make more sense if we were just returning a string. So if we just return, I don't know, something like, hello. Chris, since I don't have an object to fetch from, just a string, go to privacy, click me, we're into our controller method, I'll let five out of that, and there's hello Chris.